You're watching Channel's television broadcasting from Lagos. For now, we'll be taking you live to Abuja, where you'll be watching the vice presidential debate organized by the Nigerian Elections Debate Group, NADG, and the broadcasting organizations of Nigeria. Please stay with us. Presidential debate. The candidates are intellectuals in their own right. Tonight, it will be a contest of wits. The battle for the vice presidential seat is under the spotlight. Chance for voters to compare the candidates side by side. The stage is now set for an intense debate. Critical issues will be brought to the table. If you thought it would be easy, think again. Five candidates, one stage. Who will prevail? Brace up, everyone. We are live from Abuja, the capital of Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the NEDG Born Vice Presidential Debate 2018. Hello and welcome to the 2018 Vice Presidential Debate, organized by Nigeria Elections Debate Group and the Broadcasting Organizations of Nigeria, supported by its partners, Civil Society Election Situation Room, and World C. We are live in Abuja, the nation's capital. Tonight, five candidates selected through an impartial and transparent multi-layer survey and a number of selection criteria alongside an online poll. It's about 60 days to the 2019 presidential election in Nigeria. But before then, a debate is necessary to promote civil discourse and provide a platform for these candidates to articulate their positions on public policy, as well as intimating the people on their style of leadership and problem-solving abilities. Tonight, we will be engaging the vice presidential candidates whose personalities, when elected into office, amongst other things, is advise the president and superintend the economic council. This debate is a simulcast, running on many platforms across the globe and on bond member stations. There are set rules and guidelines for the debate. The candidates are aware and have agreed to those guidelines. This two and a half hour debate is divided into segments. Fitness for office, economic policies and direction, governance, security and social development, as well as the economy. Before we get into the flow of the debate proper, let me invite to the stage the Executive Secretary of the Nigerian Election Debate Group, Mr. Eddie Emissary, for his opening address. Elections debate put together by the Nigerian Elections Debate Group and the broadcasting organizations of Nigeria. I am Eddie Ms. Lee, the Executive Secretary of the group. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you to this event. It is another history making event in the politics of our nation. As we know, we're at a critical stage in our history where we are faced with a series of decisions, one of which is to elect a credible president that will lead this nation, which is the most populous nation in Africa, for four years. It is an opportunity to see how the tremendous opportunities will be brought up. Africa is looking up to this giant to push upward and forward. And the world is also waiting for us to excel. How we do that is now 
left to us. Tonight, we bring on stage those who are seeking to be vice president in a debate that we put to test the understanding and the abilities to act as president, lead the economic team, and assist the number one person to stir the affairs of this great nation to greater four years. The selection of these five parties that will be represented here tonight is perhaps one of the most difficult tasks the debate board and the committee who sat on the selection committee have faced in years. But it is done carefully, fairly, and in the most credible manner using multi-layered systems. It is scientific and a series of other globally accepted standards. The debate tonight is about issues. Ones that will shape the future of this great nation in the years to come. I do hope as you watch tonight, from wherever you may be, in the country today and around the world, in your minds, the love and passion for Nigeria will grow more. And you'll make the right decisions at the polls next year. On behalf of my colleagues, welcome to the 2019 presidential elections. Let's also welcome the convener of the Civil Society Situation Room, an umbrella body for most of Nigeria's civil society organizations who are also supporters of this debate. Mr. Clement Wanko. Distinguished uh, ladies and gentlemen, your excellencies, welcome. We are delighted uh, to be supporting this debate because we think it's important for citizens to understand those who are seeking their mandate, those who are seeking their vote. The importance of citizens being able to make a decision regarding who governs them is the ultimate goal of democracy. This country has practiced democracy since 1999. We demand increased democracy, which means that those who are seeking our mandate should only be able to govern us because they have earned our votes. And that's why we're especially delighted as this debate is happening this evening it's an opportunity for citizens to understand those who are seeking their mandates, what it is they seek to do for the citizens, for the country, to lift us up from where we are to greater heights. This country has incredible potentials. We have incredible human resources, and we believe that those who are seeking to rule us, to govern this country, should be a manifestation of the deep levels of incredible resource human resource that this country has. Nigerians are listening, and we're hoping that the vote of Nigerians only will be what determines who governs us. Thank you so much. Uh, let me state at this point that none of the candidates who are appearing here today or their party members have seen any of the questions we are going to be asking them. The audience here in this auditorium has also agreed to remain silent. No cheering, no jeering. That way, this debate will achieve its purpose. But the exception to that rule is now as I introduce the candidates in alphabetical order using their party acronyms. The candidates of the Allied Congress Party of Nigeria, ACPN, Ganiyu Galadima. <clears throat> the candidate of the All Progressive Congress, APC, Yemi Oshibajo. The candidate 
of the Alliance for New Nigeria, ANN, Khadija Abdullahi Ia. The candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Peter Obi. And the candidate of the Young Progressive Party, YPP, Umar Gesso. Now that we have the full complement of all the candidates, could we please rise for the national anthem? Thank you. This debate is streamed on all our online platforms. You can join the conversation on Twitter using the hashtag 2019debate. Hashtag 2019debate. All right, I've just uh, a while ago been handed the questions. You can see the candidates sealed. None of you have seen them. None of your party members have seen any of these questions. So we shall proceed to open the envelope. And we shall begin the debate. First, we need each of the candidates to have an opening statement of three minutes each. And we begin with the candidate of the Allied Congress Party of Nigeria, ACPN. The three minutes begins now. Uh, fellow candidates, the moderator, distinguished uh, audience, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, I want to give glory to God for giving, this, for giving us the opportunity to be here today. And my sincere gratitude also goes to the NEDG for giving us the opportunity to speak to Nigerians. This is not the first opportunity of my party to face, with, to face Nigerians in a presidential contest. In 2015, we participated equally in NDG debate for presidential candidates. Even though then I was a presidential candidate. But between 20 15 and now, I think we have recorded little or, or, or no improvement in, in governance, and the life of people is becoming the worst for it, making Nigeria to be the, 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 the capital of poverty in the world, which, which, which is very disheartening. So I want to say 
that we cannot continue to do the same thing the same way. And we're setting different results. There's need for Nigerians to look at the candidates and their manifestos before they can cast their vote. Nigerians are the worst for it, and the, 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 the GDP of the country is becoming lower and lower, becoming lower and lower. The, the bay of this is that unemployment is becoming higher and higher, and this is because of the wrong policy of the government. In 2015, what we were told by the APC was that the subsidy was a fraud. As it is today, Nigeria is subsidi- the Nigerian government is subsidizing petroleum product, PMS, to the tune of two billion naira daily. Two billion naira daily. If you calculate two billion naira, approximately two billion naira daily times 30 days, it's, 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 it's too staggering. That is to say that we are subsidizing inefficiency. We are subsidizing the rich. And funds that are itato are supposed to go into development, into infrastructure, and to build other sectors of the economy are being, are, are being frittered away. Is the reason yes, why time in, is, up. is this thing why Your in 2019? Thank you very much. It's now the turn of the candidate of the Alliance for New Nigeria, AAN, Khadija Abdullahi Iyan. Good evening, sir. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, fellow candidates. My name is Khadija Abdullahi Iyan. I am a nation builder, a lawyer, and a social entrepreneur. I was born 44 years ago into the family of Elijah Audukwengila. I was born in Kaduna, grew up in Lagos, and came back to the north. I studied law from the University of Abuja and had my master's degree from the University of Joss. I gained my experiences from the legal practice, banking and finance, and media. I founded SI Magazine Limited, which is focused and humanitarian journalism, and social development. Before SI Magazine in 2006, I founded an NGO called Beyond Mentors Community Care Initiative, which is devoted to women and children, promoting women, women empowerment policies, encouraging literacy at the grassroots, and cultivating the spirit of patriotism. I am passionate about women, particularly passionate about the plight of children. That's why most of my programs are focused on and focused and targeted at the, at the children and youth. I believe that we should all be concerned about the plight of children in Nigeria. And, I be, and, and that is basically securing our future, the future of our children, our future. I am vying for the, for the office of uh, Vice President of Nigeria because I am concerned about the over, every, every one of the over 2.1 million children in the Northeast and the IDP camps, which are scattered across Nigeria. I am also concerned about the 13 million children who are out of school. I am, as a wife and a mother of seven, I am committed to using every resource of authority at my disposal to ensure that every child, every young person, every mother and every father gets the opportunities that they deserve in their pursuit of happiness. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for keeping within your time frame. The candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Professor Yemi Oshibaju, your opening statement. Thank you very much, and good evening, everyone. Good evening, uh, candid- fellow candidates. I'll just go straight to where we're at uh, as a government, uh, beginning with our journey in infrastructure. 
Today, we have begun perhaps one of the largest infrastructure projects in the history of our country. We're building railways between Lagos and Kano. That medium, that, that, that medium gauge railway, we, we, we expect that the first phase of it, that's the Lagos Ibadan part of it, will be ready in January. At the same time, we've done the Al Jawari. All we're left with is supplying feedstock to it. Kano Maradi Rail, which is one of the oldest commercial routes in the country, that has just been given. And the KFW, the German, uh, the German uh, bank, is sponsoring, that, is sponsoring that railway, the Kano Maradi Rail. We're also looking at the Lagos Calabar Rail. And these are some of just the rail routes. In every, in every state of Nigeria today, we have a major road project. Practically 16 years after the Lagos Ibadan uh, Expressway was, was, was abandoned, we are dealing with that today, and we're building that Lagos Ibadan Road practically every day today. That's a major road out of, uh, out of the commercial nerve center of Nigeria. At the same time, agriculture. In the area of agriculture, barely five years ago, this country was importing $5 million of rice every single day. Today, we're down to 90% less. We're, we're, we're producing 90% of the rice that we consume, and we're importing only 2% of what we used to import. At the same time, we are doing other, there, there are other forms of produce. Sorghum, for example, is fast replacing barley. We're also in cashew and practically every other area. Agriculture in Nigeria today has certainly gone up in leaps and bounds. I hope we'll have time to talk about that later on. We have a social investment policy, possibly the largest ever in the history of our country. 500 billion is what we're investing in every cycle. Under the Empire scheme, we're employing 500,000 graduates, and the 500,000 graduates are in every single local government. At the same time, we have the homegrown school feeding program. 9.2 million children are fed every single day in 26 states of Nigeria. We have what is called the government Empire government empowerment and enterprise scheme, which is a microcredit loan. We have market money, which is, the small, which is for small businesses, and then we have the trader money, which is for the petty traders. So far, we've done about 1.4 million petty traders and market people in all. At the same time, uh, we've got, under that same SIP, we have the conditional cash transfer scheme, taking at least 400,000 people so far out of poverty. Thank and you trade. very Thank you. much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Yeah. As the turn of the candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Peter Obi. Mr. Vice President, fellow candidates, we now live in a country where we have the highest number of poor people in any nation, 87 million, and growing 6% every minute. Our country today has the highest number of out-of-school children in the world. Our HDI has dropped from 152 to 157. Our global competitive index has dropped from 124 to 127. In terrorism, we have moved from seven to number three, just behind Iran and Afghanistan. Our inequality has worsened. Our misery index has worsened. Our stress index, we are now 148 over 149. If you look at all this, it's hinged on two things from studies, and that is on education and unemployment. Our unemployment has moved from 24, as you know, to 40 today. The more you can invest in education, the better your economy. That shows we're not investing in education. In an in, in issue of unemployment, which has worsened, we have millions of our children out of school. And you can see from a study that there's a straight link between SMEs and growing your economy. And we're not supporting on SMEs very well. If you look at what China has been able to do with the SMEs, SME in China is contributing 60% of their GDP. And 60% of China's GDP is 7.2 trillion, which is 18% of Nigerian GDP. They are contributing 60% of the employment. On urban employment, they are contributing 
80% of urban unemployment in China is 480. 80% of that is 380, which is towards the Nigerian economy. China today, using the same SME, is guaranteeing 10 million jobs annually. This year alone, half of this year, China has produced 7.2 million jobs, which is over 40% of their target. Within the same period, Nigeria lost 40. 4 million jobs. So we need to re this and have a better focus on how we can create jobs. As long as we don't create jobs and have the number of unemployed youths in their productive age that we have today, we're going to have crisis. That's why we have issue of insecurity, issue of instability. All sorts of things we're witnessing today is because we have not been able to create jobs that other countries are creating with effortless ease. And I know that Atiku Abubakar Obi presidency can produce jobs, which is the most critical thing. Thank you to very much. Today. Thank you. Candidate of the Young Progressives Party, YPP, Uma Gessel. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Bon. Thank you, Channels, and all the organizers of this wonderful and memorable event. My name is Umma Abdullahi Yezo from Kano State. Daughter of a former senator in Kano State and a person that's grown and brought up into a political home. I have a passion for the girl child education and I spend the early years of my adulthood in the development of a common Nigerian. I was the pioneer member, founder of Palala Women Multipurpose Cooperative Society in Bauchi, which has impacted the lives of a lot of rural women in Bauchi. And I later on founded Youth Enlightenment Initiative of Nigeria, which up to now we are empowering young men and women in the country. I later on joined the political system, which I co-founded New Progressive Movement a party that intend to create a kind of avenue where the youths can just run what they have politically. And now, as a member, as a running mate of Professor Kingsley Magalu, I want to use this opportunity to thank the organizers of this event. And um, our pres my presidential candidate is a person that has a lot to offer to Nigeria, because if you compare him with the choices we have, we can see that Professor Kinsley Magalu is among the best because he has experience in all sectors of the, of the economy, which is the main problem we are having today in Nigeria. And I, as Uma Yesu, feel that I should join this race because I am a passionate Nigerian. I so much believe in Nigeria working again. And as, I, as a mother of three, as a wife, I've, as, an, as, as a normal person, I've been to the lowest level of Nigerian standard of living, and I know how Nigerians are suffering. I know that there is no substantial thing from, 2000, from 1999 to date than a, that a typical Nigerian will show today and say, yes, I am proud of my country. So to be candid, YPP is a party that is here to give a new thing. It's a party that's founded with a new ideology to bring in the paradigm shift, a bunch of kind of new set of politicians, new set of people, because we cannot deal with people that destroy our past to come and to expand, expect them to come and improve our future tomorrow. So we are trying, we, we, in our party, we have a lot of support from the youth, and because we all know that the youth are the future of tomorrow. So in my party, we so much believe in the new Nigeria, a Nigeria where every Nigerian will have an equal right and will have a story to tell tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to all of you. Um, well, we go on a very short break, and when we return, we will be meeting our candidates on their ambitions. Stay with us. shot of pain which occurs when teeth are exposed to hot, cold or acidic things. Cold water from the fridge would, would trigger sensitivity. A lot of people would accept 
accept anyway and just grin and bear the pain. What I would say to the patient is switch to Sensodyne, make it your daily toothpaste over a period of time would reduce tooth sensitivity. And a lot of them come back to, you know, to thank me, to say that, wow, just something so simple. It adds the sparkle back into their life. Relieve tooth sensitivity with Sensodyne Daily Care 40 milligrams for just 350 Naira only. My name is Nachichi, and my husband, they call me Chi Baby. Now, why I they use a risco tomato paste with the 100% natural tomato they cook? You go come here, my husband, they call me Asam Pete. Now, me be told you, Jare, my canteen no get rival for you, bad My customers know they take my food to joke, yo. Hey, them don't confirm, I'm saying, read Jiko 100% natural tomato paste. They make food sweet, not be small. That now, why my customers, they call me Oh, Lord, what she be? No, not like me. My family, they happy any type food already. Because they know say na Jigo 100% natural tomato paste. Good for body. That's now why I like... ...candidate of the ACPN. The office of the vice president is often seen as that of a spare tire. Spare tire role to the office of the president. Do you think the office needs more responsibilities? Or is okay as it is defined in the Constitution, the Nigerian 1999 Constitution, as amended? I have not seen the office of the vice president as a spare tire because it is the same constitution, it is the same qualification that the president of a country, of our country, must have, that the vice president must have. And besides, Roles were specified for both the president and the vice president and the vice president. And don't forget, if the president is if the president is not around, it is the vice president that took over. And I want to tell you to know how important the office of the president is, that is not inferior to the presidency, is that if the vice president of a, of our country takes any decision as acting president, the president of a country cannot legally, cannot legally go against that action. I remember when our president was away for some time, the first president acted, and all decisions that were taken by him as acting president of this country were never controverted by, by the president. So the president, the first president of, a, of this country, is just like the office of the president. They have the same status, although one is higher, but none is inferior to the other. Thank you very much. Candidate of the ANN, should you win this forthcoming election, you will be the first female vice president of Nigeria. How prepared are you for that role and the responsibilities that come with it? Thank you for the opportunity to be here. Being a nation builder, Sticks from the heart, somebody that builds from the builds a human being that starts from the human development. So being having to be um, to take 
the position of a vice president is not something that should be taken lightly because a nation builder is that person who sees a problem and resolves it. Our party is known, well known for what it stands for. It's, we're not talking about, uh, we're not the politicians of the usual days that promises this and that. So what we are going to do is to ensure that every policies that have been taken collectively as a party will be implemented effectively. We have shared values. We understand what the policies are. We understand what the issues are, which issues who are, who, who, who goes to the root of humanity. That is what we stand for. We stand for humanity and community development. So being a vice president of um, the uh, Federal Republic of Nigeria is, a, is, a, is an office which must be taken seriously. It's an office which participates in all the cabinet meetings at office, who, who, which is about the economic development of who, who, who handles, which handles the issues of economy. So what we are trying to do in our, in, our, in our party is to ensure that the economy is diversified, the economy is vibrant enough to stop the too much dependency on a mono economy that we were used to, to ensure that every aspect, every aspect of the 774 local governments that we have in Nigeria as, uh, uh, is, is upgraded to a commercial hub where every, every resource, every mineral resources would be, uh, would be enhanced and upgraded, where we would ensure that the issue of unemployment and every other issue that affects the economy right now will be well taken care of. So it is not a, an office that should be taken for granted. And as I stand, because of my background in humanitarian services and issues, and as a mother, these are, we're used to a, a, a country who put politics before economics. In our party, we are putting economics before politics because economics is the driving force. We're doing agriculture. We're talking about um, uh, the, the diversification of agriculture, which the, um, the, this administration has already been doing. But what we'll do is much more than what the... Uh, uh, this admi administration Thank you very doing, much. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Candidate of the APC, you have been vice president for the past three and a half years, almost three and a half years. How tasking has this role and responsibility been for you? Thank you very much. I, first, I'm sure that uh, those who know me quite well know that my hair was not this gray when I started out in 2015. <laughs> So, really, it has been tasking. It has been ta tasking, but it has also been a, a, an, an incredibly a rewarding experience, especially from the point of view of the ability to do the things that uh, one wanted to do all along as an individual. But the role is one where you are, in many senses, the chief advisor to the president of the country, and possibly the one person that, that will represent him even just when he's absent for, you know, for a, a meeting, as opposed to even when he's absent for longer periods. So there is a sense in which the role of the vice president is one that very closely mirrors the role of the president in, in very profound ways. But our vice presidency is different from the vice presidency of other countries, because unlike other countries, even countries that have similar constitutions, our own uh, a constitution actually specifies roles for the vice president. So the vice president is the chairman of the National Economic uh, Council. That is the council that, um, th that's a council where all of the governors of the states meet every once in a month, and the vice president chairs that. That's a constitutional role. Aside from that, the vice president is also the chairman of the NCP. That's the National Council on Privatization. The vice president is also statutory chairman of about 22 different parastatals and agencies. And these are all defined by law. So in some senses, I mean, those who say, for example, that uh, the vice presidential, or the, vice, the role of the vice president is spare time, have it wrong because they probably are looking at other jurisdictions. In our jurisdiction, there are very specific roles that a vice president uh, is entitled or, or, or is empowered by law to perform. 
But I think that one of the more uh, interesting things about that role also is the fact that still a lot depends on the trust that exists between the president and the vice president because the president does delegate several of his roles. And he can delegate those roles depending, of course, on, how, uh, on, on the kind of trust that exists between, uh, between both parties. So, very, so many times also that role is one where a good degree of trust is required between uh, the two players, namely the president and the vice president. Where that trust exists, I think there is plenty of room for activity for the vice president. There's plenty that the vice president can do. And uh, finally, I think that uh, the role of the vice president, you know, is one which also requires, you know, uh, I think a great deal of patience, a great deal of patience, because you may not always agree, you know, you may no, not always agree with policy, you may not always agree with, uh, with, with all the various aspects of what is being done. You may not Thank always you agree, very much. But Thank you. Time is up. Candidate of the PDP. Now, we have seen vice presidents fall out with their principals. Now, should this happen to you if you win the forthcoming election? How would you handle it? Well, I assure you that that won't be, that won't be the case. Because like it's clearly stated, the vice president have a role. And the role of the vice president, to me, is most critical role. Because we're talking about the economy of this country. The main problem of this country today is the economy. The economy is on the knees. And because it's not working, it's not creating jobs, it's not doing anything, the vice president is in charge of regaining this economy and rebuilding it to where you can create jobs, to where you can be able to ensure that there's financing in various areas of our government. The vice president is in charge of, for example, debt management. Today we have virtually at a level where our debt is unsustainable because we are using over 50% of our revenues to service debt, which means we don't even have enough to be able to do infrastructural projects that is need, highly needed in this country. Today, your country is owing about $22.7 trillion, $80 billion. And we need to do more, and you can't even find the money to do it. So the vice president of office is critical that you're not today part of G20, you're not part of BRICS nation, even the mint nation where you are, is because you have a poor economy. Because if you look at the BRICS nations, every other government there, Mexico has a GDP of over one trillion and per capita of over a thousand. Turkey that is there has a GDP of 800 billion and per capita of over 10,000. Indonesia has, a, and your own is low. So the vice president has a role to build the economy, to create jobs, to be able to make the country work. So it's a critical role. In falling out with the president, if you're doing the right thing, you can't fall out with anybody. I can assure you of that. If you continue to do the right thing, because the vice president won't choose you, chose you for a reason. He knows that you have something to deliver. So you're not there. You're there to be loyal to him and serve Nigeria faithfully. So I don't see where there's a problem. I can tell you I've never had any issue with anybody in government, and it won't start with this, because we will together start making Nigeria work again. Thank you very much. Candidate of the Young Progressive Party. We run a presidential system of government which concentrates a lot of power in the office of the president. In a situation where you have a principal who hardly relinquishes power and authority, even when the constitution mandates him or her to do so, how do you deal with such a situation? Thank you very much, Mr. Medrejo. Let me start from the platform we are on. In Young Progressive Party, I think there's no any other party in Nigeria that has given priority to women because most of the offices we have, even in the national level, are always these are the woman is up and the man is deputizing, or the man the woman is the, the woman is the man is up and the woman is deputizing. Professor Kingsley Magalu's presidency is about giving 50-50 opportunity to women 
to participate in his government in all levels of, of in all offices. So I don't think there's any presidential candidate who came up openly without any um, uh, reservation to make this public. And I'm very, very sure him making this public, really, he really meant business. And I don't think at this level he will, re he will reverse it. That 50-50 gen gender equity is almost the priority in whatever we're doing in YPP and Mogalu's presidential, pres um, presidential candidacy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, let me say at this point in time that the next round of questions, uh, you have two minutes each to answer the questions, and you have one minute of rebuttal if you do have anything uh, to contribute to that question. Now, uh, let me begin with the YPP, this end. It is said that about half of the Nigerian population lives in extreme poverty which invariably gives us a sad appellation of the poverty capital of the world. How would you reverse this situation if you are elected vice president of Nigeria? Well, this question is taking us back to job creation and economy. Economy is the backbone of each and every country. We all know that. And the economy of Nigeria, as we all know, it's not giving us what we are expecting. So economy alone can never be over-exaggerated because an economy constitutes of the constitutional restructuring, healthcare, security, education, youth empowerment, employment opportunities or job creation. Let's take, let's take the constitutional restructuring. As Professor Kingsley Mogalu has in his own plan to restructure Nigeria, but constitutional restructuring, because I know everybody today is busy talking about restructuring, but we are talking of the real constitutional restructuring, whereby the central will, as it give distribute power down to the six geopolitical zones and give them opportunity to test run and to own the, the resources they produce and control them. This is a very, very major thing that will bring back our economy into life and create jobs. And the second thing is power. If at all today in Nigeria we are able to just decentralize the grid and distribute power and to make a grid in all the six geopolitical zones, there will be job creation. There will be enough power, or 24 uninterrupted power supply. And solving power issues alone can solve 70 or 80 percent of Nigerian problem. Because power is what is holding us back today. If at all in South Africa, they have so only 75 um, uh, million population and they are producing 50 something. Okay, thank, thank you, you very thank you. much. Candidate of the PDP. Now, closely related to that question is the fact that the aggregate investment in Nigeria in 2018 is put at about $60.8 billion. Only 13.6% of our GDP. It has never gone above 16% in the last 10 years. Now, why have we failed so woefully? And what are you going to do differently as a government? If you look at the economy, aggregate investment is not where I'm going to look. But now look at the, the shallowness of the economy, starting from everything. If you look at let me just use one thing, your capital market. Your capital market today is only $30 billion. It just lost two two trillion anyway, about almost uh, $8 billion in the past one year. But look at it. South Africa is $900 billion, the second economy in Africa. That shows the shallowness of your economy because what you're doing is that you have a government that is trying to do what it's not supposed to do. The role of government is supervision and create the support and the guarantees that will enable private sector to drive the economy. So that investment needs to triple because it's even low compared with your, that's why your size of your economy is very shallow. 
So for us, and that is why it's not creating jobs. That's why you have the level of unemployment you have today. So if you're talking about how to drive up the investment, if you look at everything that's been done, is that you need to look at the overall economy, rigig it properly, where the private sector would drive the economy, there would be more investment, a lot of what happened, your banks today, all the loans they've given is about 15% of your GDP. When other countries are doing 50, 100%, China alone is doing 250% of their GDP as credits to businesses, to private sector. And you can see why you have better investment in other nations than Nigeria. Thank you very much, candidate of the All Progressives Congress. Uh, whereas uh, in 2018, Nigeria had an aggregate investment of 60.8 billion, uh, a country like China has an, an aggregate investment of $5 trillion, which is about 41% of its GDP. South Africa, here in Africa, has a $65 billion aggregate investment, which is about 18.56% of its GDP. But in the last 10 years, Nigeria has not risen beyond 16%. What is the problem and how can it be tackled? I think the common, the common denominator of the countries you've mentioned, both China and South Africa, is strong infrastructure. Our country, over the past 16 years, has suffered a major infrastructure deficit. So we don't have rail, we don't have roads, power. You know, when we came into office in, in, 2000, in 2015, power was at 4,000 megahertz. That is 16 years, in 16 years. So you need strong infrastructure. And nobody can make excuses about that. You've got to have strong infrastructure, which is one of the major focuses of our administration's policies in putting in place the right infrastructure. The second thing is that you cannot have a thriving economy if you allow the type of grand corruption that has taken place in Nigeria in the past 16 years. I've heard one of, our, one of the candidates say that fighting corruption is not an economic policy. With all due respect, if you don't have resources, if you don't have money, if the resources have been stolen, then you cannot possibly even generate jobs. You can't even build infrastructure. In the past, in the past three years, the, 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 the government of President Muhammad Buhari has spent 2.7 trillion on capital in Nigeria. That is the highest ever in the history of Nigeria, despite earning 60% less than the previous government. We have, we, we, we have, earned, we, we have currently spent 2.7 trillion in two budget cycles, and we're earning 60% less when oil was at $100 to $114 a barrel. No infrastructure was built. Today, oil is at sub-60. When we came into office, it was $28, going on to $30. Yet, we spent more on capital and on infrastructure. The second thing is that you must have poverty if you don't, do, if you don't have a social investment scheme. I've heard some mention already about countries like India, like Mexico, like Brazil. These are countries that had a social investment policy. Thank and that's you, the sort sir. of thing we have also. Thank you, sir. Yes. Right. C candidate of the Alliance for New Nigeria. Now, Nigeria's misery index is currently put at 51.26%, which is um, a combination of the sum of its unemployment and underemployment. Now, even when you use the old data and the current level of inflation, now, what are you going to do to address this perennial and growing problem of misery and hopefully restore hope to the Nigerian common man? Because of the, as, as, because of the policies we have with ANN, Alliance for New Nigeria, poverty has become like endemic in every aspect. And despite what is, uh, we do respect the, uh, His Excellency, um, um, pre, uh, Vice President Usibaja have said for, for the, uh, all the efforts that the government has put in, we are doing a complete overall. Most problems that we have is the fact that our over 774 local governments are not fully developed. 
what we are trying to do is we're going to, we're going to, devol- we're going to do the devolution of power. We're going to do resource control. We're going to do revenue, uh, resource control and constitutional amend- amendment because those are the things that are structures that affect the endemic poverty that we have, poverty that we have in Nigeria. Number one, in devolution of power, well, we, in the resource control policy that we have, we're looking at, like I mentioned earlier, that we're going to look at each resource that each local government has. Each local government will be given 20%. The 20% of the resource, the money is generated from each local government will be given to the people. 20% will be given to the local government. 20% will be given to the state government, and the 40% will be given. That way, more employment are generated, more monies are going around, more people in China, most people, most families, if you go to each family at the local government level, you'll find out that every person is producing something. The more vibrant the economy is, the better we, we are able to eradicate poverty. Another aspect that we're going to uh, tackle is education which where education is going to help to tackle most of the endemic poverty that we have in Nigeria. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Allied Congress Party of Nigeria, ACP and candidates. The value of the Naira has depreciated over time. In fact, uh, at some stage, it drops so sharply to $520 to, I mean, 20 Naira to a dollar before recovering, and now... We have multiple exchange rates in the country, ranging from 305 naira to 364 naira per dollar. What policies or initiatives do you intend to pursue to bring the forex market into equilibrium and reduce this misalignment? Thank you. We and the global village, the world is now a global village. And the level of production going on in the country determines the strength or otherwise of the currency of the country. If, there's no, if, there, if much are not going on in the economy of that state, please forget it. Because as it is, Nigeria does not have the capacity to determine the, 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 the rate that which the Naira is achieved for other currencies of the world. So ensure a, 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 a higher value for the Naira. We need, we need to look inward. An economy that depends solely for everything to come into the country, for everything to be imported, you know, it, 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 it's not a serious economy. And until something is done to reverse the trend, what we do is just to look inward, to ensure that whatever we can produce locally, we don't import it. Whatever we can produce locally, we don't import it. Then we look at the economy to engineer it, to make sure that the economy works. For instance, in the petroleum sector, what we, what, what we do currently is to import all our PMS needs. This will be refused. We will make sure that even if, if, if we at the moment does not have the capacity to, to refine and sell out, we, at least, we, our government will do something to make sure that we had value to the product that you are, that, that, that you are selling out. That will, that will create jobs. And in the regulation, what we do is to create a, a, the enabling environment and support the, the private sector to be able to drive the economy. As it is, the file of the Naira is low because foreign direct investments are not coming. And until something is done, to, to make sure, to give confidence to the Thank international you system. That, oh. Thank you. Your time is up. We'll be going uh, on a very short break. And when we return, uh, we'll be talking more about the economy. But well, please uh, let it be noted that if you have a reporter, which uh, you are entitled to, for any of the points raised by any of the candidates, please indicate and you'll be given the opportunity one minute to do so. But that's when we return from this break.
My name na Chichi. And my husband they call me Chi Baby. Now why I they use a whisker tomato paste with the 100% natural tomato they cook. You go come here, my husband they call me Asam Pete. <laughs> Now, me be told you, Jare, my canteen no get rival for you, bad rock. My customers know they take my food to joke, yo. Hey, them don't confirm, I'm saying, read Jiko 100% natural tomato paste. They make food sweet, not be small. That now, why my customers, they call me? Oh, Lord, what she be? Name na like me, my family, they happy any type food already. Because they know, say, na Jiko 100% natural tomato paste, good for body. That now, why I like you, they call me, Yari Nyana. <laughs> Erisco with Jiko and a Jiko tomato paste now made in Nigeria by Erisco Foods Limited. Then day for market for inciting and snatches. Enter the world of luxury Swiss Street dolls. With over 28 years' experience, stock is of exquisite historical dolls made from the finest ancient aga and ivory wood. A range of exclusive armored dolls, elegant interior dolls, carefully crafted by the world's renowned architects and engineers. At Swiss Street, a doll is much more. Plus, orals and premium quality onyx marbles. Distributors wanted nationwide. Visit Swiss Trade today or call now. Swiss Trade, a blend of beauty and security. Here is Kellogg's Cocoa Pops for you. Kellogg's Cocoa Pops is tasty and nutritious and has 11 vitamins and minerals. I cannot think of a better breakfast for my children. Do you give your kids Kellogg's Cocoa Pops? Enjoy Kellogg's Rice Krispies for breakfast. It snaps, crackles, and pops. Kellogg's Rice Krispies is tasty and is enriched with 11 vitamins and minerals. My family loves it. Try today. On all barn stations, follow the cup. Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. Before we went on that break, we were talking about your opportunity of the candidates to have an opportunity to uh, do a reporter. And if you have uh, any clarifications to make, please indicate and you will have one minute. Uh, the candidate of the PDP indicated, right, please go ahead. Well, let me clarify again what I said when I said the Fighting corruption is not an economic policy. It is not that you can't fight corruption, but you can fight it more aggressively while addressing economic issues. For example, in 2015, unemployment and unemployment was 24%. Today it's 40. In 2015, we were attracting $21 billion in foreign direct investment. We attracted only 17 last year. Uh, we attracted only 12 last year. That means it's going to, our GDP was 520 in 2015. Our per capita was 2,500. $2, Today it's under 1,900. If you look at our stock market, it's lost over 2 trillion in one year. So that is not any policy. You're not creating jobs, you're not doing the right thing, and you're just fighting corruption. You can't shut down your shop and be chasing criminals. Thank you very but much. You come back, so Thank you. Please. 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 There are rules and guidelines to this debate. 
You are not allowed to cheer in the audience. You are not allowed to cheer. And you are not allowed to jeer at anyone. Please, let's stick by the rules. Otherwise, we may be forced to remove you from the hall. Please, let's be matured. Thank you. Candidate of the APC. Thank you very much. Let me say also that if you allow criminals to steal all the inventory in the shop, there will be no shop. <laughs> That's the problem. Please. That's the problem. Please, please. And Please. What has, and, and, what has happened, and what has happened to the Nigeria in the past 16 years is what the World Bank told us, that the major cause of our poverty is corruption. That's a major cause. That's what we've been told. So, 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 let me say, so let me say that there is no way that we can minimize what has happened. We can't minimize corruption. If you minimize it, we run the risk of completely... In fact, the argument is lost. We cannot do what we want to do unless we're able to minimize corruption or eradicate it completely, which is what we're trying to do. I want to rebut the question about our debt figures. I, 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 frankly, I know that, uh, I know that uh, the candidate of PDP knows very well. Unfortunately, sir, your time is up. Okay. And let me, let me again say that each time you chair or chair, you reduce the time of each candidate. And that time is very valuable, is very vital for him or her to make the necessary points. Please, let us reduce, the, completely eliminate the chairing and chairing. Please. The next question is a common question for all the candidates. In two, I mean 2016, when there was a major adjustment in the price of petroleum products, from 87 Naira to 145 Naira. Nigerians reluctantly accepted this price hike in the understanding that this was going to be the last and that the world petroleum subsidy will be banished from the Nigerian government's lexicon. Now we hear of subsidy again. What is any of you going to do differently to put this problem to bed? candidate of the Allied Congress Party of Nigeria. Two minutes. Subsidy, subsidy, subsidy. <laughs> that has been the, the, the greatest appeal that the resources of this nation have been frittered away. What our government in power will do is to do away with subsidy. You do away with subsidy. Firstly, there are a lot of inefficiency in, in the system. The PMF, the petroleum importers, it sometimes is round tripping. They do round tripping. In addition to this, there, there is no effectiveness in it. And let me tell you, by continuing with subsidy, we are killing the economy of this country and we are killing the people. We are doing away, our government in power, by the grace of God, we do away with subsidy. What we do, is to deregulate de 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 the sector. In a situation where you fix prices, you are, you are indirectly telling people not to come, because nobody will bring his uh, uh, capital into a venture that is not profitable. If petroleum product, if our crude petroleum is deregulated, there are international investors and local investors that will come to this country to come, on, to come and establish industry, they are creating so much job for our people. The government in power will deregulate, will deregulate the petroleum sector. Because subsidy is not even in the interest of the common man. Some of us will have as, as many as 20, 30 cars. There are lots, but what are the common people on the street? The poor peasant farmers, what are they benefiting from this? Some of them don't even have a bicycle. The subsidy regime only favors the rich. And any policy or program of government that does not favor the poor and the common man district, I think should we do away with it. We will do away with subsidy so that we can create jobs massively Thank you very much. for our people. Thank you. Candidate of the ANN. Yes. Good evening, sir. Subsidy 
subsidy in Nigeria is fraught with corruption. And if transparency is being applied to the excess money being, being gotten from um, the, the balance of the sub subsidy is going to tackle a lot of problems that has fraught the nation. My big, our, our, what we're big on in Alliance for New Nigeria is the fact that, number one, we'll attack the, uh, the institutions to ensure that there's, there, there's um, enough transparency, there's enough technological um, um, technological uh, issues, technological GPS that, that has been upgraded to ensure that every kind of corruption is tackled. If subsidy is being eliminated, if we, what we want to do in Alliance for when it comes to is to number one, diversify the economy, which I've mentioned before. If we are able to diversify economy, the economy and stop the dependency of, um, uh, on oil products, we'll have little or no problem at all with subsidy. And once we are able to get the, uh, the residue of the subsidy, we're using it to also do the four important things that we, we've always talked about. Talking about restructuring of our infrastructure. We're talking about ensuring that um, most of these um, um, excesses are being allocated to various um, structures like education, health, uh, healthcare system, and all talking about the, the complete overall of, of, the, um, of the civil service system. So subsidy is not something that will, it's something Thank that will tackle much. properly. Thank you. Yes. Candidate of the APC. Thank you very much. I think the major problem with subsidies are just the abuses that can attend a subsidy. A subsidy is not inherently a bad thing, it's really the abuses, and I'll explain very quickly. Now, what happened under the old subsidy regime was that several independent marketing companies would simply come in and say, we delivered five cargoes of uh, PMS, whereas they delivered nothing or delivered only one, and so they made the subsidy in the difference. Today, it is the NMPC that is the sole importer of petroleum, so it is on the balance sheet of the NMPC that the subsidy has been taken. Now, let me say also that if today you were to remove subsidies, petrol prices could go up to as high as 220, uh, 220 naira per liter, could even go higher. Now, there is no country in the world, at least even the most developed countries, that don't run one kind of subsidy regime or the other. For the simple reason that sometimes you just need to take some of that effect, some of the cost effect, away from your citizens. So, for example, America subsidizes agriculture, subsidizes production, subsidizes all sorts of things. Now, if you have a petrol subsidy, and I'm not saying that it must be there forever, but if you have the sub petrol subsidy, it helps. Because the moment you remove the subsidy, prices go up. We experienced it uh, earlier on in the regime. Prices went up from 86 to 145 uh, naira per liter. And then there was cost push inflation. Transportation prices go up, uh, food prices go up, even rents go up. Everything goes up. While, now, while consumer spending is weak, and while we're trying to develop the economy and develop the capacity of the people to spend money, I think that a subsidy, at least a minimal subsidy, is useful now. And that's why I think that uh, the, the subsidy regime is one that we can tolerate, but obviously it, we must remove it as time goes on. But we can't uh, remove it immediately. Thank Otherwise, you very we'll, we'll suffer the consequence. Thank you very much. Candidate of the PDP. Well, what we are subsidizing today is inefficiency. If you get it right, the price will still come down. There's no way a country can have a budget of 340 billion naira for health, which translates to five naira a day for its citizens, and then pay a trillion for subsidy. There's no way you can have an education budget, which is the most critical component of your development, at 400 and something billion, and you're paying subsidy of a trillion. It is a waste. You need to reverse it. Because you're not paying, so they're not dealing with the engine that will drive your economy tomorrow. To, everybody knows that even petroleum itself 
It's a package economy. At the time, people are doing, developing a new economy, and they're not paying attention to that. What are you actually subsidizing? Look at it. Nigeria has one of the local ownership in the world. It's 10 per thousand. So we have only 2 million vehicles, and you're paying almost a trillion when you have 87 million people that are poor. You can't do that. It's too till you need to reverse it. And I can tell you, if you do the right things, the price will come down because you're just paying for the delay in importation, the number of time cargo stay in the port, and everything. We can't continue to pay for inefficiency in this country. I can tell that you can remove it, do the right things, the price of petroleum will come down. Thank you very much. Candidate of the YPP. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Well, um, uh, we've never been in government before, but the people that are presently and those that were have said a lot about the subsidy. I could remember during Jonathan when subsidy was removed, Nigeria was shut down. We were all out, which leads to a lot of things now. And um, along the line, during the early regime of President Muhammad Buhari, still subsidy is removed. And um, Nigerians were so patient, thinking that we are going to achieve something. So I think you throw a question to us, but I don't think, as I'm standing here today, have much to contribute, but to throw it to Nigerians. There was subsidy removal and still subsidy removal, and nothing has been done. I still, still had them saying they are still paying subsidy, and the lives of Nigerians have not improved and we've not seen anything substantial or something tangible on the ground. So to be candid, subsidy to a typical Nigerian is just a scam. That's how I will call it the way President Bahari once said it in the newspaper. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, there's no rebuttal. Okay. Um, my rebuttal is simply this, that the question to ask the Nigerian is how much we're prepared to pay for petrol. That's the question. Because if you say to a Nigerian, remove subsidy or not remove subsidy, you hide the fundamental question. The fundamental question is, are you ready to take a 40 Naira increase in petrol prices today? We say no. We say that the average Nigerian cannot tolerate that price increase. That's what subsidy is about. That's what it's about today. All right, yes. Yeah, my report is still, still on the issue of subsidy. There are so many things that we can do with the removal, with the subsidy that will be removed from petrol. For instance, P uh, AGO diesel is now, it has been removed from the list of subsidy. Likewise, kerosene. Everything that are mostly being used by the poor. The, the, the markets of supply and demand will eventually regulate it if, it is, if, it, if, the, if the subsidy is removed. And let me tell you, there are so many critical sectors that the subsidy regime can be deployed to. The agricultural sector is there. This, uh, the, 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 in farming, there are so many things we can do. Now there's crisis between farmers and cattle areas. These people are not getting any attention from the government. Subsidy that if it is removed, the, the, the whole sum of money that is being wasted on daily basis can Thank be used you. to deploy... Thank you. To, 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 Thank to, you. To Your time is up. Sectors. Candidate of the ANN. I was going to, I was going to say the, um, almost the same kind of things that he said about the issue of demand and supply to affecting subsidy, because I know that once subsidy is removed, there are excess for the government and all the monies that are derived from those excesses can be used accordingly. But my problem is, what is the government presently doing with the amount of money that has been, subsidi the subsidy that has been removed, the remnants of the money, that what is the government doing with it right now? Because it is not like what he said, it's not affecting the common man. We don't know what is going on, so that is my question. All right, thank you very much. Uh, let, let me come back to the candidate of the YPP. The gross domestic product, GDP performance, um, recovered slightly in the third quarter of this year to 1.81%. Uh, 
uh, from 1.5% in the second quarter. Uh, the target under the economic recovery and growth plan, that the ERGP, is 3%, but it has reached 1.81%. Now, this is interpreted as an evidence that uh, we are still dealing with a very fragile growth of the economy. Thank you what very needs much. to be done? Thank you very much. No country will grow if its export is higher, if its import is higher than its export. The main thing I think Nigeria needs to do is to put emphasis on production. That's the industrial sector, which our presidency, by the grace of God, is going to bring in to this country. Because if at all we will invest in our, in our, on our youth, we intend to create a one trillion capital, venture capital fund that we will inject into the youth and small-scale and large-scale industry in partnership with the private sector to see how we can impact the lives of a typical Nigerian, whereas every Nigerian can be an employer of labor, and this will definitely grow the economy and will lift the level of our GDP. Thank you. Thank you very much. Candidate of the PDP. Now, the Nigerian economy as of today is still heavily dependent on the oil sector for its uh, foreign exchange earnings and for other revenue. Now, what is or what will be your strategy for economic diversification? Because we have talked, government after government have talked about diversification of the economy. But each time we have seen uh, not real effort at diversification. What will be your government's strategy? For you just said it, there's no real effort in doing that. You have to look at the components of your contribution of various sectors to your GDP. And if you look at it, one component needs to be tackled, manufacturing. No country, no country that is doing well, if you look at the GDP of China, 40% is from manufacturing. Indonesia, 40%. Malaysia, 40%. Even in the Western world, yours is under eight, and your factories are closing down. So you need to reverse that and have, you need to support your SMEs properly, not just saying I will support them, but to do it more efficiently. You can look at your loan portfolios. Today, the total loans by the banks is 19 trillion, and only only. 0.5%, about 5%, 0.5% of that goes to your SMEs. When in other countries, it's about 20%. So there's no way, if you, if you can support the SMEs properly and be able to work on your manufacturing, which then leads that you must do something with your power. Because what you're generating today is too low. Look at your competitors. The lowest that you can see in the mint countries is Indonesia that is generating 50,000 for 250 million people, and you're generating about 4,000 for 200 million. Thank you very much. We'll go on a short break, and when we return, the candidate of the APC will be taking his turn. Stay with us. My name is uh, Orioye Benedict by Ishimure. I am a native of uh, Odun Jemitale community, Odola in the Lajalogu government area. I am an Empower beneficiary, and teach to be precise. Empower has seriously impacted into my business and my local community. Before the advent of the Empower program, I didn't really have the initiative of starting the business like this. And as it is now, everybody around the community is interested to work with me because of the value, the value addition that I've added into the business. I got some of this idea through the Empower tab, the tab that was given to us, the thing that's really helped my local community. The most important thing is that it has really changed the mentality of the graduates in my community. Hello guys, 
You see, this guy standing here, not the same guy he was last year. Last year, I made a critical decision to support the government in building better roads for Nigerians. What drove me to the FGN Sukuk investment wasn't only about the returns I was going to receive, but also knowing that my investment would contribute to the infrastructural projects across Nigeria. So I invite you to participate in the ongoing FGN Sukuk public offer, which is easy to invest in and open to everyone. Let your money do good today and earn good returns. For details on how to invest, check newspapers or visit www.dmo.gov.ng or visit FBN Quest Merchant Bank Limited and Lotus Financial Services Limited. FGN Sukuk, an investment for you and your country. On all bond stations, follow the conversation on all bond stations. Follow the conversations on all social media platforms. Hashtag 2019 debate. Welcome back and thank you so much for your time. Let me make another appeal to our audience, the studio audience here. Please do not cheer and do not jeer at anyone. In fact, if you do, I will have no choice but to stop the candidate who is speaking and allow you to continue the cheer or jeering and then after that, he or she will continue because you eat into their time when you do that. Thank you very much for respecting the rules and the guidelines of this debate. Thank you. Time now to turn to the candidate of the All Progressives Congress. And with a real GDP growth rate of 1.8% and a population growth rate of 3%, there is an indication that the, con the poverty condition in the country may further deteriorate. What needs to be done? What should be the response? First, let me say that our GDP has grown consistently in the past six quarters. It's continued to grow, and it will continue to grow. The trajectory is upwards, clearly. The second thing to note is that we are lending, and because MSMEs are extremely important, small business is extremely important, including petty trading. We are lending the highest ever to small business in Nigeria, beginning with the government enterprises and promotions, uh, and government enterprises and empowerment scheme, where we're doing about 35 billion in the cycle. BOI is doing about another 20 billion. Aside from that, we have, we're obtaining from the AFDB $500 million for entrepreneurship, just entrepreneurship. This is the highest lending ever to the, to the MSME sector. I've been to 20 different uh, states in Nigeria on what we call the MSME clinics. And in every one of those states, what we've done is that we've taken the regulatory agencies to the MSMEs. 
And we've set up in many of the states, we've set up uh, in many of the states a one-stop shop where the regulatory authorities function. Because one of the chief problems that MSMEs have is access to the regulatory authorities and answers to their various questions. Now that is being done. In addition to that, we've set up shared facilities in several, uh, in several different states. A shared facility is a place where you provide equipment, where you provide machinery that the small business cannot afford. And then the small businesses come and use it and share it. We've also, done, we've also put power. Infrastructure, as I said, is critical. We put power in markets just so as to be able to encourage small business. In our area market, for example, in, in Abia State, we, put there, there, we now have there a two-megahertz uh, power plant which just supplies the market aside from solar facilities there. And that's what we've done also in Sabongari Market in Kano and several other places where we put infrastructure. Infrastructure is key Thank you to all of much. these things. Thank yeah. you. Candidate of the ANN. Now, if you are elected as the vice president of Nigeria, you will be the chairman of the National Economic Council. What kind of policy collaboration will you pursue with state governments to ensure the progress of the Nigerian economy? So we have four cardinal R's in Alliance for New Nigeria, which is to reduce the cost of governance, to restructure every economic leeway, which includes the SMEs. Right now, the um, president, vice president talked about how they have the, um, the SME clinics. Most Nigerians have not felt the impact of these policies. What we are going to do in Alliance for New Nigeria is to ensure that every SME, the biggest problem of an SME is tax. To get a free tax, um, a tax court for at least three years, and also to ensure that the tax, the ta to, uh, to at least ensure that um, all the SMEs have some, um, depending on the kind of um, business that you're doing, you have some, uh, all the regulatory issues, all the bureaucracy that uh, to operate in Nigeria as, as an SME will be curtailed. We also have the issue, uh, the second R is the um, restructuring. Okay, the, the third R is the reforming of all ambits of um, economic policies that drives the um, economic hub, where what we are planning is to expand economic opportunities by building special economic zones in different zones in Nigeria, which would include the issue of um, um, the issues of uh, the issues that we, we highlighted earlier on about the commercial hubs, which will reduce the the bureaucracy of going to uh, export it, also having the hubs around. We're also going to talk about the, the third R, which is the reorientation of our minds to ensure that policies Thank of you. economic Thank nature... Thank you very much. Candidate of the ACPN. And our businesses in Nigeria complain generally about multiple taxation. What are you going to do differently? How are you going to reduce the burden of multiple taxation for businesses? Yes, multiple taxation is not good for the growth of businesses. And business owners are usually not happy about it. I'm a businessman too. If you are, if you are for bad burden me too much, I may be weakened and the business may eventually collapse. We have such a situation in one of the states in this country that industry are packing away to other places due to multiple taxation and tax burdens. What we do is to encourage business people by making sure that we structure the type of taxes in order to, that, we, that we impose on them, in order to reduce tax burden. And in, in most cases, to encourage some, especially new businesses that will be coming to the country, to grant tax tariff until the businesses get properly, properly, properly footed. And in the, when you are talking about taxation, you're also talking about economy. We do everything by encouraging the private sector to drive the economy. 
and who embrace reform. Because if there's no business, there's nowhere the government will, 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 will generate, nobody will pay taxation. If you are not doing anything, you can't pay tax. So that's a sort of this, that a party, the Allied Congress Party of Nigeria is coming on board in this campaign, which we know the crucial issue that will be on the border is the economy, issue of economy and security. We are bringing on board an international economic advisor in the name of Dr. Obi Ezekwesele. He's an expert in economy, he's an expert, and we believe that the issue of, uh, the, the issue of economic problems of this country will be analyzed, will be analyzed, and she will take Nigeria far to the path of progress and prosperity. Thank you very much. Any reporters on any issue, candidate of the APC? Just a quick, just a quick report, and that is that we already have pioneer status. For new businesses, you already have a five-year tax holiday, some, some between three and five years. There's also, uh, just to point out uh, to, the, uh, uh, to my uh, fellow candidate, that there is also a tax threshold for small businesses. You know, beyond that threshold is when you begin to pay taxes. So some of these tax holidays are already in place, you know, and perhaps they may have other ideas, but these are already in place. Candidate of the ANN. Yes, I have. He said they are already in, in place, but they are not implemented because I'm a business person and I know how much tax that is being demanded from our little company. I'm, be, I'm believing that once you have, once you have, once you, once you are a small business, you need some kind of re, a relief for the next one to three years, uh, one to five years, to ensure that you are able to garner some profit from. What, your, what businesses that you're doing. But every time, all businesses are, are strangulated because of the tax, uh, the, uh, the local government area will ask for tax, the, um, uh, all kinds of regulatory bodies will come and ask for the, the um, state government, the state, if you're, like we are operating a bakery in, in MENA. Every time they keep telling us, you have to pay for this board, you have to pay for that. And different kinds of people, because of the corruption, it has affected so many businesses that businesses cannot thrive because of Thank all you this. Very much. So we Thank need you. implementation. Thank you. Well, let me start from here this time, and uh, let me start with the candidate of the PDP. The African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement. Nigeria was instrumental in putting that in place, but Nigeria is yet to sign. Would you say that Nigeria should sign and belong to the Continental Economic Bloc? What advantages do you think Nigeria stands to reap from that? I think Nigeria needs to look at that agreement properly, because actually, if you had built your economy as strong as it should be, we will benefit more. We are the biggest market. Yes, you think about people bringing in their goods here, but considering that the resources of, the human resources of this country and the entrepreneurial spirit of the average Nigerian, we would have been able to build facilities, manufacturing facilities that, that would drive export, not just within Africa. African trade today is less than 9%. And if we get it right, it can go as high as 30% or 40%. A foreign exchange you're saying today you're not earning from oil. Oil line gives you 80% of your foreign exchange. When in effect, if you, if you do the right things, you can have to wise that coming from manufacturing. Other countries that don't have anything to do with oil are driving their foreign exchange earning all from manufacturing. So you have to look at the agreement, look at those things we're not doing well here, put them in place, and sign that agreement because it's going to be a win-win for us. It's just that the manufacturer said, let's look at this. Let's know what is there for us. There's no way you can be part of packaging or something, and it gets to the stage of signing. You walk out of it. So what were, what were you doing when you were part of packaging, putting it together? It doesn't make sense. Thank you very much. Candidate of the APC. I, frankly, I thought uh, my colleague of the PDP would say whether to sign or not to sign. You know, 
But let me just say very quickly that there is a process of consultation which is going on with the private sector. That process is very important because one of the chief fears of, an, of, of, of the continental free trade zone, one of the chief fears of it is the possibility of transshipment. Third countries will transship. So, for example, a China can ship its goods to Benin Republic and import to Nigeria under a free trade agreement. So we can have a situation where local industry is killed just by mere fact, just by the mere fact that we sign on to this without ensuring that all of the loopholes have been blocked. So we're in the process of ensuring that those loopholes are blocked. The Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, MAN, rejected the, uh, the, the continental free trade zone here, and we're talking to them. Similarly, in Asima, several of the, of the business bodies, even uh, Industrial and Competitiveness Council, have expressed serious reservations, and we must consult. We are a private, we are a private sector-driven economy. We cannot just say because we were involved in the process. Every African country was involved in the process. But it's our duty as a responsible government to ensure that we take into account all of the different issues that are involved before we sign. Even, even, even trade remedies, even a regime of trade remedies, we have not put in place, the, 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 the AFCTA has not put in place a sufficient regime of trade remedies. All of these issues have to be taken into account. There's no hurry to rush into, 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 into signing that agreement. There's no hurry whatsoever. We must make sure that we cover all our bases, all the bases, before we sign. That really is the issue. Thank you very much. Yes. Candidate of the ANN. So if, if we are going to, we have to look at all the surrounding circumstances of the agreement before signing. We, are, we, are, we have the policy to be driven by private sector, like you said. But we, in our own way, we are looking at it in a different way. Because once you sign an agreement, you are already completely bounded by it. We have to look at how much that agreement will affect the common man in the street. What will, how much employment will that agreement bring? How will it upgrade the development of our industries, which we're looking at diversifying? How will it also affect the GDP that we're looking to expand? So in, those, in that agreement, we'll sit down and, on, and ensure that there is provision for, agree, for, for employment, where issues of employment, because a lot of times we see that the Chinese government are coming in, and they are coming in with all their people, to most of their people to come and work, without taking cognizance that we have a lot of people who are unemployed, unemployed in Nigeria. So what we will do as, as, as a party uh, uh, in our government is to ensure that everybody is taken care of. Because we also want to collaborate with other parties, other countries. We want to encourage free trade soon. We'll also look at how much that um, agreement will affect our local industries. If it's going to help us, if it's going to be like an exchange, it's, it's important for us to look at it carefully before signing. And it has to be in alliance, it, in, it, it has to be in tandem with what our general policies stand for in our, in our, in our government. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Yes. Candidate of the SCPN. Well, I thank God that the sitting government has not signed the agreement because the agreement will not be in the interest of this country. And I say so because presently, so much is not going on in our, in, our, in our economy, especially in our industries. And any program or policy that will sign, that will turn Nigeria into thumping ground for goods from other countries and cripple the local industries would not be in the, in, the, in the interest of us. It is a good thing that has brothers that will trade with each other. But are we going to get equal advantage from them? Now, most of our industries that were to, most of the industries that were formerly based in this country are relocated to Benin, Togo, and some other neighboring countries. So what will really it benefit Nigeria with the highest population and a very big market in Africa? I think the property is for Nigerian government to pull the signing of the agreement on hold until the economy of this country improves and our manufacturer industries are thriving. Thank you very much. Candidate of YPP. 
Thank you very much. <clears throat> As where Nigeria is standing today, I don't think it's a wise decision to go sign in such kind of agreement. We have advantage of population. If at all, Nigeria today will try to inject some funds, let's even start with the state level, where each and every state in Nigeria, let's not even talk about of the, of the, let's not even talk about of the natural resources. You can see that each and every state in Nigeria have something, one thing or the other, that they are producing that's different from what we used to have all over the world. If at all, we will inject some amount or some investment into such kind of um, uh, businesses or such kind of tech, uh, uh, creativity into each and every state, definitely we will get what we want, but that's when the country will be very, very strong in production. That's when such kind of policies will favor Nigeria. But not at this stage we are where Nigeria doesn't produce much and our export um, activity is very, very low. Thank you very much. Yes, candidate of the PDP. Thank you very much. Like I said before, our government will be demand-driven, not supply-driven. That means you need to consult the people. Be at the stage of planning, not at the stage of signing, you, you say, oh, well, we need to go and consult the people. We will do it before we get to that stage. Two, you don't need to fear about China's transshipment. That shows inefficiency. Labor is, labor is more expensive in China today than it is in Nigeria. In fact, we have 87 million people who don't have jobs. So if goods that are manufactured in, in China can leave China and you pay the high shipment, including duty clearing, and it's cheaper than what you manufacture, something is wrong here. So you fix it. And look at the just, let me just give you an example. Just a papa, to bring our goods in a papa, costs more than it costs to bring the goods from Europe to here. Thank you very much. Thank That's you. transport. Thank you. Yes. Candidate of the APC. Yes, um, I think my rebuttal is simple. Question really is that the, A, the, the continental free trade area has been negotiated for years. It, the, the negotiation started even under the previous government. So the question of consultation or not consultation and when it ought to have taken place really could have taken place many years ago when they started these negotiations. Second point is that labor is not the only factor of production. It's not the only cost. So the mere fact that labor is cheaper in Nigeria than China doesn't mean that goods produced in Nigeria will be cheaper than China. And what is going on today, for example, is that if you import rice from China, it will still be cheaper because a lot of their rice is stored up there and is heavily subsidized as well, just as from America. Second point is that we still have issues around power. Power is a major cost. That's one of the reasons why we're investing so heavily in transmission and generation and trying our best to do with distribution. So there are many other costs. It's not just about labor. I mean, if you talk about labor, that's, a, that's, a, that's just one single cost. There are Thank so you. many other costs. Thank so you. dumping is a major issue. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Let me stay with you, candidate of the APC. Now, the Central Bank of Nigeria is very passionate about uh, 41 items that uh, have been excluded from the forex market. Uh, only recently, another item, fertilizer, was added. Is it a good, a, very, a good policy in your view? Well, let me say first of all that the Central Bank of Nigeria is independent in terms of its own activities, and I really cannot change or not change their policies. But let me say to you that, just take some of the examples. Toothpicks, for example, have been imported into Nigeria. Fertilizer, which we have now cracked, with the, with the, with the, with the uh, collaboration we have with Morocco, we are now able to deliver fertilizer at half the cost. So you have fertilizer now as, as you know, some 6,000, 7,000, at some point it was about 12, 13,000, even higher. So you can no longer do that. And rice is also another example. We were importing practically all of our rice. As I said, $5 million of rice every single day. Today, we are no longer doing so. We've encouraged local production by preventing a situation where anybody can simply go and buy rice. I, I simply go and you know, open a farm and bring in rice. So if you are going to protect local industry, if you, are going to protect local, if you are going to protect local activity, then you need to do something like what, uh, you, you may need to do something, such as what the CBN is doing. Final point on that is that when you have, where you have a situation, such as we have today, these 41 items, 
It is not a ban on those items. All that the CBN is saying is you can't come to us for foreign exchange. You can go and source your foreign exchange wherever you want, but you can't come to the CBN for foreign exchange for these items where they believe, uh, which they believe can be produced locally. So that really is the point. Thank you very much. Candidate of the ANN. Nigeria is perhaps the only oil producing country in the world today that imports petroleum products. Uh, and uh, this is because our refineries are not performing optimally. Our refineries. Now, our refineries are not performing optimally. And so we have to import, uh, export crude and import refined products. What would you do as vice president or your government uh, if you get elected? Would you build new refineries or would you privatize the ones that we have now? Now, like I said the last time, is that we're going to heavily invest in a PPP kind of government, which is the pub a private public um, partnership. So we're grateful that at least right now we have one Nigeria that is trying to upgrade, um, is trying to build refineries. I don't see why as a country, if the systems are well developed and the processes are strengthened, why we should be importing, bringing in petroleum when we are the ones that have all that. What we should be looking at is building more refineries in the country, expanding on those and asking the private sector to get involved also asking international communities to collaborate with us on how to ensure that the petroleum, the petroleum um, sector is well strengthened. And also, the infrastructure aspect of um, building the refineries, ensuring that the, um, the huge transparency um, cloud um, IT, ICT system will be, will be encouraged so that all the processes and the systems will be transparent enough for everybody to see what's going on, for the, uh, for the uh, common man to know what is going on in the petroleum sector. Right now, a lot of things are not being transparent, and we don't know. But what we want to do differently is to ensure that more refineries are built, more PPP are, insure, uh, are, um, are established, and also to ensure that other, the diversification, we should not depend at all on petroleum. We should diversify our economy in agriculture, in ensuring that we have more industry, and so on and so forth. Candidate of the ACPN, some experts have suggested that what is required is a concession of some critical uh, infrastructure or sectors of the economy. For instance, the refineries and even in the aviation sector. What will be the agenda of the ACPN when it comes to power as far as concessioning of critical infrastructure is concerned? Well, I have said this earlier, that one of the cardinal principles of the ACPN as contained in our manifesto is to bring reforms. And the reforms will be in, in the petroleum sector and other sectors where the government is, is, is the major stakeholders. You see, the, the, the attitude of Nigerians to public enterprises are nothing to write home about. We have four refineries, none of them is working. And they are due to human factors. If you continue to do this thing, our people will leave our people to be, continue to be vulnerable. What we do is to hands off the interests of government in all the federal government businesses so that they can be handed over to, the, to, to investors. In that way, if you have your own business, you monitor it jealously to make sure that you are making profit. So you, you do it to make profit. When, if it is... Government business, in Nigeria, government business is not anybody's business. So in the reform that we are going to do in the critical sector of the Nigeria economy, all business interests of the government will, will be privatized and we encourage people, we encourage our people and investors 
we are necessary even with funds, with funds and partnership to make sure that services are provided for our people at minimal cost. Thank you very much. Candidate of the YPP, what would be the major economic trust of your party, or if you get elected, as far as the aviation sector is concerned? Well, we know that those days we used to have Nigerian Airways, which were very, very one of the largest um, uh, airlines in the world. And today, African countries like Egypt, Ethiopia, and others have taken that away from us. The major thing a typical Nigerian needs to get to look into is to see how we can rekindle patriotism into our hearts. Because all these things, we have them in abundance. All we have the manpower, we have the resources to fix those things. I think recently we had the news that we're all overjoyed that there will be a kind of the bringing back or the awakening of the Nigerian airways, which we're all joyful about. But as time goes on, the thing just, we don't know what happened to it. So to be candid, what Nigeria just needs is patriotic leaders, leaders that have Nigeria at heart. This is just what I will say about the aviation sector. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Candidate of the PDP, let me take you to the ICT sector. It is one of the fastest growing in the world today. And the power of ICT to transform the economy is not in doubt. What will your government do as far as the ICT sector is concerned? Well, you're talking about investment in education, in STEM, science, technology, engineering, mathematics education. That is the future. I've said it before that the more you invest in education, the better your economy. So we'll aggressively invest in education. I've done this even as a governor of a state where I took a state from being number 28 to number one. Because we know the value of education. I was the first to buy and equip all our schools with ICT. I understand what that is all about. Go to HP, I bought the highest computer ever bought by a government in Africa, 30,000. So I know the value. I know what it is today. Just look at one simple thing. The economy of Nigeria is $420 billion. South Africa is 280, that's 700. Egypt, that is the number three, is 250, 950. When Apple, market capitalization is 1 trillion. So you need to invest in that. And it's so clear in the world that in 2020, you have 25 million STEM jobs available in the world. We will take ICT serious. We will invest in it. That's why I said you can't continue doing subsidy when you need to invest money in the future. You're driving yesterday. If you continue to do what we're doing, you're kind of man investing in yesterday. Those who think about yesterday and today will miss tomorrow. We need to invest in tomorrow. And I will invest in ICT aggressively. That's what our government will do. And I'm sure that's what our TIC will do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any reporters on any of the issues? Well, just to say that um, with respect to technology, we're not talking about what we will do, we're talking about what we are doing. And what we are doing is that we're investing very heavily in technology. At the moment, we've set up six technology hubs in the six geopolitical zones. Those technology hubs are being funded uh, mainly by the federal government. Some of them are part-funded. STEM education is critical, and we've, uh, as you know, we've uh, done the curriculum, which is not just STEM, it includes, it's actually STEAM, it includes arts, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math, which is very crucial. And we're looking, and, and we've also invested, we've also invested heavily even here, in, even here in Abuja, in, in, in five uh, model classrooms for technology. We're looking at what to do for, for technology training and how to make technology training available for everyone. We, we set up a technology advisory group, Thank which brings in much, all sir. technology. Okay. Thank you very much. At this point in time, we'll go on a break, and when we return, we'll be talking a lot more about the economy and business environment in Nigeria. Stay with us.
is a short pain which occurs when teeth are exposed to hot, cold or acidic things. Cold water from the fridge would, would trigger off the sensitivity. A lot of people would accept anyway and just grin and bear the pain. What I would say to the patient is switch to Sensodyne, make it your daily toothpaste over a period of time would reduce tooth sensitivity. And a lot of them come back to, tell, you know, to thank me, to say that, wow, it's just something so simple. It adds the sparkle back into their life. Relieve tooth sensitivity with Sensodyne Daily Care 40 milligrams for just 350 naira only. I am Aleoha, Emmanuel in H N I C. I'm from Imo State. My husband is from Abia State. I reside here in Jebode, Ogun State, in Irenwo community. I've been a cassava farmer, and I noticed there is no much money in cassava farming alone. So when I heard about Empower Program, I applied for it, and they gave me the opportunity to be part of it. It was from Empower Program that I learned how to process cassava tubers to cassava to full flower. This Empower Program is the best thing that happened to me within these two years. I've really learned a lot and I've really gained a lot from it. It was from my stipend that I bought my equipment that I'm using to process cassava flour today. I'm grateful to the federal government for giving us this device. I've really learned a lot from it, from the application and all that. Sensitivity is a short pain which occurs when teeth are exposed to hot, cold or acidic things. Cold water from the fridge would, would trigger off the sensitivity. A lot of people would accept anyway and just grin and bear the pain. What I would say to the patient is switch to Sensodyne, make it your daily toothpaste over a period of time would reduce tooth sensitivity. And a lot of them come back to, tell, you know, to thank me, to say that, wow, it's just something so simple. It adds the sparkle back into their life. Relieve tooth sensitivity with Sensodyne Daily Care 40 milligrams for just 350 naira only. Enter the world of luxury Swiss treat dolls. With over 28 years experience, stock is of exquisite historical dolls made from the finest ancient agar and ivory wood. A range of exclusive armored dolls, elegant interior dolls, carefully crafted by the world's renowned architects and engineers. At Swiss treat, a doll is much more. Plus, orals and premium quality onyx marbles. Distributors wanted nationwide. Visit Swiss Trade today or call now. Swiss Trade, a blend of beauty and security. As Nigerians prepare to march to the polls in 2019, first, we engage the vice presidential candidates in the 2019 NEDG Bonn presidential debate. Now, in 10 seconds. Welcome back. All right, let's turn to the candidate of the Alliance for New Nigeria. Wow. Uh, the Nigerian economy today is still burdened uh, by the problems of power supply. Okay. Now, specifically, if you are elected to government, how many megawatts of power do you think your government can generate per year? Right now. Right now, we are div what we have Right now, we have the prepaid meter um, kind of um, pre what we are having in government right now is prepaid, and still Nigerians are not feeling the impact of what is what we have presently. We want to generate, aside from the four hydroelectric and gas and all those things that we have, we want to diversify the uh, the power sector. We want to upgrade the megawatt to more than the present um, numbers that we have. We want to ensure that we have maximum demand. Um, we, uh, we, we want to ensure that the prepaid meter and maximum demand meters for all government and ministries, department agencies understand what it means to uh, understand the essence of power in, gov um, in governance. So what we're, we're, we want, we are upgrading the present 
level of um, power supply down. We expand, we use um, innovation to also bring about the new systems of power diversification that we're trying to do, aside from the present one that we have, because we know that the megawatt is not enough for us. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. A candidate of the ACPM, um, the Ajakuta Steel Company has got over $10 billion in the last 30 years. Now, what is your plan for this very critical infrastructure? The issue of Ajakuta has been there for a very long time. And it has been fraught with corruption, serious corruption. And now a, 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 drain, a drain pipe to the nation's economy. Ajakuta could have been one of the major big industries that could have set the stay for the, for, the, for the progress and development of this country. Just last week, I think I read in one of the papers that the, the Senate has approved about one billion to be injected into Ajakuta State Company, State Rolling Company. That's about the several billions that has been sucked into it up to now. The, gov the, the, the government is not benefiting anything from it. I think what we do, what our government in power will do, is to look into the issue of Ajakuta still only me critically, so I'd be able to find a, a lasting solution to it. This is a major economic something for, for, for our nation. What we do is to, is to, is to advertise and to, 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 for people to do a competitive bidding so that we can pick the best company that has the capacity to turn the industry around so that still the serial limit can be brought back to life. Thank you very much, candidate of the YPP. The steel rolling mills in Nigeria are all, as it were, not working to capacity. And this is also a function of the fact that the Ajakuta Steel Company has been down for several years, after so much has been spent. What do you think is the way forward? Well, <clears throat> the way forward to fixing the steel industry in Nigeria is initially I could remember I read about the plan to fix it, but I just don't know so what's happening, why it's not being fixed. But we intend to invest and bring in investors because I know in, right now in Nigeria we have a lot of Chinese that are into business, but they're into that very business, especially in my northern part of the country. But we still need investors and we still need to partner with local um, uh, interested people to see how we can be also part of this business and how we can generate um, uh, funds to go into this sector. And the second thing, I'm very sure a lot, I heard somebody talking about why the steel company is not working, it's still power issue. So I think we need to rekindle steel um, uh, patriotism into the hearts of Nigeria to see how we can cripple the generator mafias. Because I'm very sure by defeating such, Nigeria will have power supply and most of our industry today will be at work. Thank you. Thank you very much, candidate of the PDP. Nigeria's ease of doing business ranking is currently at 146 out of 190 countries. And there's been an improvement in recent times, yet uh, this is not a very good ranking for our country and for our economy. What will you do to improve the ease of doing business if you get elected? Well, in first, if to look at where your competitors are. If I belong to the BRICS nations, where are they? If I belong to the MIND nations, where are they? If you look at all the rankings, they are just below 100 and you are 146. So it's not good for you to compete. And what are you going to do that? I keep saying that government needs to move out of business and do the right things. There's so many things you can do. Let me take the issue of port, for example. Nigerian Port Authority, for years, looked at the expansion that is coming and everything, and decided not to invest 
Instead, we're using money wrongly. Nigeria Post Authority is the only port in the world that has an office, even guest house, outside its country of operation. They have a guest house in London. And that is the problem. You're not investing money in the business. And the reason why they're not investing money in this business is that the source of their money, the source of their money is, is it the, gov- the waste that is in government continues to drive their process. So you need to get these things to be more efficient by allowing them to get their money from the capital market. If the money they are using to operate today is from the capital market, they will become more efficient because they have money, loans that they need to pay back, they need new managers, and banks will be after them. Thank you very much, thank you. Candidate of the APC. Can, can I rebut before I... Yes. Can I rebut? Please go ahead, one minute. Uh, I thought the candidate of the PDP will at least acknowledge that while under the PDP, we fell 64 places down on the World, on the world Bank Index. Under us, we've moved 24 spaces in 18 months, 24 places up in the ease of doing business. The second thing is, if you say investments haven't taken place in years, who has been in office this last 16 years? Isn't it just incredible? Isn't it just incredible how it is possible to keep a straight face and talk about all that has gone wrong? Why this country is where we are today and why we're where, 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 why we're where we are today is because of 16 years of mismanagement of resources. That's the problem. That's why we're where, 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 well, that's why we're here today. That's why. So all these investments ought to have been done. We're investing in infrastructure now with 60 percent less. We're investing in infrastructure, 60% less. We're doing far more with less. That's the kind of thing we're talking about. Our port is 38. Our port is supposed to be taking 38 million metric tons. Thank you very much. It, thank it, you. It's doing 83 at the moment. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, let, let me say here that this is not uh, an altercation between two parties. Uh, you have the opportunity for a butter. Uh, let, let me come to your question, and that is also related to the ease of doing business. And that's uh, about how to attract more foreign direct investments. If you get re-elected, what would you do differently from what you have done in the last three and a half years? I think to I attract will... more uh, direct foreign investment to the Nigerian economy. Certainly, what we intend to do is to build on what we're doing. That's why we're talking about the next level. We need to build on what we're doing. At the moment, we move 24 places up in the ease of doing business. It means, of course, that even internationally, it has been accepted that we're one of the top 10 reforming economies in the world. That's the World Bank report. So what we really need to do is to build on that. And we're, exact, and we're doing exactly that. One of the issues with uh, foreign direct investment, of course, is in creating the environment, power. We need to, we need to improve power which is one of the critical issues for us, which we're doing, improving transmission assets, improving distribution assets. At the moment, we have improved transmission assets by 2,000 megahertz. So where we, were, where we inherited 5,000 megahertz of delivery on transmission, we are now able to do 7,000 megahertz of delivery on transmission. And we need to keep improving. We need to improve our railroads. Because, for example, if you look at the Lagos Canal Rail, it starts from the ports, from their papa ports so that goods can be taken out of their papa ports up out into the hinterland. So we need to improve road infrastructure. We need to improve rail infrastructure, which is what we're doing. So the critical investments that need to be made in infrastructure are being made now because today you have a, you have a prudent government. You have a government that is ensuring that grand corruption is not allowed so that the resources available to us are being invested in the economy. That's how come we can improve, invest five times more than when we were earning $100 a barrel or $114 a barrel. So that's the thing. We will simply focus on what we're doing and improve the infrastructure. Once you improve the infrastructure, foreign investments will come. We'll also create the environment for local industry. That's what, one of the critical issues for us, creating the environment for local industry. And we're creating that environment already for local industry by all of the steps we're taking, uh, entry and exit of ports. We're doing all of that, looking at the taxation regime. Thank you very much, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Now, we're, we're on the home stretch now, and we, we must quickly um, take Sorry, a question each on foreign policy. 
the ANN, foreign policy. I mean, he said that Nigeria's foreign policy has hardly changed for decades. What do you think is the right foreign policy for Nigeria at this stage of our development and in a changing global environment? Foreign, because, because of one of the R's that we have in ANN, about reforming the part, uh, foreign policies that we have, we presently have. What we're doing differently is to ensure that every kind of uh, collaboration that has, been, uh, that has been existing before will change. We want to do foreign policies on healthcare services, service delivery, foreign policies on education, foreign policies on security. What, we, what, what, what is being one of the problems that has happened to what has happened to us that we have a lot of prolifer, proliferation of um, 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 issues on insecurities because we've not tightened up the knots on our foreign policy matters. We've not done enough to ensure that this aspect of our um, our system is adequately. Um, taken care of. Now we have people coming in from the border side, coming in the, uh, from the small, small um, uh, towns like the Chad basins, the Chad area, the Cameroon area with arms. What have we, what, uh, what has the present government done about this um, uh, proliferation of arms and this which is causing a lot of conflicts within, this, uh, within our communities, killing our people and all that. What we are going to do differently is to ensure that there's um, homeland security, which will ensure that uh, all the um, mil uh, military uh, security agencies have an information system um, sharing, which everybody will ensure that everybody coming in into our communities, we are well aware of there will be sharing of information and ensuring that our borders are secured. And having the fact that right now, what I feel is that government is not doing enough to ensure that places thank, who we thank are, you very where much. we have given. Thank you. Candidate of the ACPN, what will be the foreign policy trust of your government if you get elected? Uh, the foreign policy of uh, the government of the ACPN will be one that will be of mutual benefit to our country and to the countries of the world. This is because the world is a global village. Um, we tend to share advice, we share expertise, we share so many things together. What our government will do is that the relationship we will have with other people, especially in trade, will be the one that our country will benefit from. Then, in, 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 in also in, in, in security, it has been very difficult for this country to, 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 to get supplies of the required machinery to, to combat the Boko Haram menace and other security matters that we have, uh, 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 that is staring our country in the face. We will ensure that we build our relationship with countries that have experts in, in all this machinery, so that they will have confidence that the equipment they will be selling to Nigeria will be used for the purpose for which, for which it was required. Then also we will have relations with our neighboring countries, because we, we, we are brothers. Whatever is affecting Nigeria negatively, we obviously affect countries like Cameroon, Niger, Chad, and other West African countries that are bordering the Nigerian territory. So in the, to fight Boko Haram successfully and other insurgents, I think we will require collaboration of all these countries so that if the fight gets to a stage and the Boko Haram fighters are receding, there will be attack from other countries. Thank so you. Things that cannot be done alone, we try and see how other countries of the world can collaborate with us. Thank you very much. Candidate of the YPP. Thank you very much. Professor Kingsley Magalu has served in the CBN for a good five years, and his performance there can never be overemphasized. He was part of setting such policies that 
During his time, there was an economic meltdown that affected a lot of countries in this world. But Nigeria was not directly affected then, due to the good work of his team. So I'm very sure Professor Kingsley Mogalu has a very good plan for Nigeria to set a very good foreign policies that will suit our country. Thank you very much. Thank you. Candidate of the PDP, what will be the party's foreign policy trust? Well, will Africa still be the centerpiece of Nigeria's foreign policy? It will remain so. Because I believe that we're first Africans and we're, we have a lot to gain and to offer Africa. And while dealing with other nations, making sure that our relationship is beneficial to our country and brings a lot of value in terms of security, in terms of our economic turnaround and everything that will help us to create jobs and help us to see that what, it will be a win-win situation. Not a situation where we now go around all over the world borrowing. We will go more to learn about what they're doing because I believe that what they are doing will be more valuable to us to implement here than a situation where we're almost going to borrow everything from China. Thank you very much. Candidate of the APC. Yes. Now, having drawn the government for three and a half years, what is it that you think you need to do differently as far as foreign policy is concerned? I think the major focus of our foreign policy is and will remain the economy and security. So, uh, for example, in, in trade, on all of on trade issues, we're extremely vigilant. We just set up a trade office, a trade negotiations office, which had never been in existence, so that we're able to enter into fair trade agreements with everyone else. And that accounts for some of the work we're doing on, a on the AFCTA. Also, some of the economic partnership agreements that we're supposed to have signed with, uh, Europe, with, the, with, with the European Union. These are the sorts of issues that we're looking at. We're saying, for instance, that we, will, that we cannot sign those EPAs as they are currently because we're looking out for the economic interests of Nigeria in our foreign relations. Second, of course, is security. Uh, one of the points that has been made uh, is that we will cooperate with our neighbors. Indeed, that is what is going on at the moment. The multinational joint task force is one such cooperation. So Chad, Cameroon, Niger are partners with us in fighting uh, Boko Haram and other, and, and, and other forms of terrorism that may be showing up, especially uh, the uh, Islamic State of West Africa and all of that. So clearly, what our foreign policy will be will, and continue to be is our emphasis on the economy, our emphasis on security. All of our friends, whether they are in the West or whether they are Africans, we will judge their relationship with us on the basis of how beneficial they are to our economy and to our security. Thank you very much. Now you have an opportunity to make your closing statement, one minute each, not more than one minute, your closing statement. Thank you. We just to implore Nigerians that we are at a critical stage in the life of this country and that we should open our eyes and, fold, and Nigerians should fall for candidates based on the manifesto that they, are, that, they are, that they are presenting to them. That Nigerian economy now is, is, is vulnerable. It's vulnerable and can collapse anytime. We need an expert, somebody who knows how to turn things around, to fix things, so that Nigeria can be taken back to the path of progress and prosperity. That Nigerians should please fall for the CPM, for a change. We are sure of the reforms that we wanted to bring. We should not be afraid to reform. And that if we fought for a party, Nigeria will be better for all of us. Thank you very much. Candidate of the ANN. Fellow Nigerians, the decisions we have to make in 2019 is whether we want more of the last four years or a departure from the last four years. We all have experienced firsthand the pains of the last four years brought upon us by a cabal that runs the government. What Nigeria needs is freedom from this bondage called the cabal. And what we offer in ANN is to ensure that a new Nigeria is birth, a new Nigeria where you can have opportunities for all to pursue your own happiness, a new Nigeria where you are, where we are, where you are commit, where we want 
the ANN is committed to that new Nigeria, and we are happy that with the four cardinal uh, uh, principles that we have in reducing the cost of governance, in reforming our civil services and institutions, in restructuring our economic base, in reorienting all these... Uh, Thank you very all, all much. These, Thank we you. are committed Thank to you. reorienting Thank the you. minds of our people. Candidate of the APC. God bless Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Amen. Nigeria is where it is today because of 16 years of misrule. <laughs> the first thing to say, the first thing to say is that let be allowed. The first thing to say is that poverty in 2004 in Nigeria was 80 million. As of 2014, it went to 112 million in Nigeria. What we set out to do from 2015 was to reduce that poverty and contain it. That's why we set up a social investment program of 500 billion naira, despite the fact that we're earning 60% less. What we've tried to do in the past four years is to redress the damage that had been done. We intend, and, 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 and what we've done in that past four years, first of all, is to prevent the leakages, the corruption, that brought us to where we were. Thank you very much, sir. Yes. Thank you. Candidate of the PDP. Let me start first by thanking Nigerians, and secondly, thanking my dear wife for his support, especially in this particular journey. And also, to remind Nigerians that Atiku Obi presidency is about create, making Nigeria work again, because Nigeria is not working today. We are in a situation where we're in a situation where four years ago, on March 26, 2016, 2015, our president said to us, if I fail to deliver, choose your leader. The question is, have they delivered? Today, please, today, please, please. today we have a situation where our president told our children that are drowning in the sea they're on their own. Those children are not on their own. We will care for them. We will look for them. We will ensure that that volcanizer that will need power. Thank you power. very much. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate of the White House, please, 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 please. Candidate of YPP, your closing remarks. My fellow Nigerians, we have had a very long night. Please give our audience, please. You have listened to all of us tonight. And Nigerians are wiser. They are not the Nigerians of yesterday. I'm very sure you will judge who is here sincerely to offer you something new, to give you back your Nigeria. We are here today to call on the 84 million voters, which are mainly young women, young women and men, to come out and vote for their choices. During 2015 election, we were left with no choice. But today, Gave of Magalu ticket is the option we are giving to Nigerians to come back and retrieve their Nigeria. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'd like to thank all our candidates who have made it here today. The candidate of the Allied Congress Party of Nigeria, Ganiu Galadima, thank you so much. Candidate of the um, Alliance for New Nigeria, ANN, Khadija Abdullahi Iya, thank you so much. Candidate of the All Progressive Congress, APC, <laughs> Professor Yemi Oshibajo. Candidate of the People's Democratic Party, the PDP, Peter. And candidate of the Young Progressive Party, YPP, Uma Abdullahi Gesso. Thank you. We will now take the national anthem, and please, uh, after the national anthem, we appeal to the candidates to remain standing uh, behind their desks. The national anthem, please.
Thank you very much. Please, please listen to this. Please listen to this. Remain seated. Please remain seated. Nobody should come to the stage. Nobody should come to the stage at this point in time. Remain seated where you are, or if you choose to stand, remain standing. We will be presenting certificates to the candidates, and they will be having a group photograph. Thank you, and please do not step forward if you are not required here. Thank you. Hmm? Eh? We are doing that in alphabetical order. First is the candidate of the Allied Congress Party of Nigeria, ACPN, Ganiu Galadima. You need to move. <laughs> Next is the candidate of the Alliance for New Nigeria, ANN, Khadija Abdullahi Ia. The candidate of the All Progressives Congress, APC, Professor Yemi Shibajo, is next. The candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Peter Obi. The candidate of the Young Progressive Party, YPP, Uma Abdullahi Getso. Hello. Thank you very much, everyone. Can we please, as we are seated, we'll take please photographs. Please remain seated. Please Do not let's come be seated. To the stage, please. The Nigerian Election Debate Group will be having photographs. Please, let's remain seated. You've been watching the vice presidential debate organized by the Nigerian Elections Debate Group and the Broadcasting Organization of Nigeria, reaching you live on channels television from Abuja. Now, we are unable to bring you our regular program at this time, Sports Tonight. But do stay tuned for the broadcast of another program, Hard Copy.